Carvana has had one of the wildest rides in recent stock market history, exploding to a triple-figure high before dropping down to less than a cost of a Big Mac in a matter of months. So why'd they flop so bad? Carvana's origins can be traced back to DriveTime Automotive, a used car dealership chain owned by Ernest Garcia II. Garcia II's son, Ernest Garcia III, reportedly founded Carvana as a subsidiary of his father's company after graduating from university. Originally, all of Carvana's inventory was bought directly from DriveTime. His father, Garcia II, also injected a significant amount of startup capital directly into Carvana, amounting to around $100 million, according to Forbes. A few years later, Carvana was spun off to form a standalone company, no longer purchasing its stock from DriveTime. Forbes notes that, Although Garcia II provided a significant amount of the initial funding for the firm, and was also the biggest shareholder, he was not listed as a director or officer of the company when it was spun off. The report speculates that one of the reasons for this was due to Garcia II's previous conviction for bank fraud, relating to dealings with a previous company. Instead, it was Garcia III that became the CEO and the public face of Carvana. One of Carvana's unique selling points was that instead of picking up their car from a local dealership, buyers could use one of the company's eye-catching vending machines. These vending machines were glass towers that were several stories high, with a selection of used cars that could be seen clearly from the outside. When a buyer finalized a purchase, they were given an oversized coin which they could slot into a retrieval system. This system would then grab the car from its shelf in the vending machine and deliver it straight to the waiting customer in the collection bay. The core was we need to give customers a great experience where they don't have a stomach ache and make the feeling at the end different. From that point, the buyer would have seven days to inspect and test the car to see if it was to their liking. If it wasn't, Carvana would accept the car back for a full refund. The first of these vending machines opened in Nashville, Tennessee, but the company quickly opened more machines at locations all across the country. Carvana really hit its stride thanks to COVID. With people being forced to work from home, the need for electronics skyrocketed at the same time the factories that made those electronics had to shut down. This had a knock-on effect on car makers, as with supply chains suffering and their own factories being hit by COVID-related closures, they simply weren't able to produce enough vehicles to meet demand. As a result, demand for used cars skyrocketed. We've told you before how computer chips for cars are in short supply because of the pandemic, but now dealerships are starting to feel that full effect. Enter Carvana. As revenue increased and more locations were opened, investors became increasingly bullish on the company's stock. Data from MarketWatch shows Carvana's share price increased from $111 at the start of June 2020 to $275 just a year later, eventually peaking in August 2021 at a whopping $360.98. But it wouldn't last. In the first quarter of 2022, Carvana reported its first decline in sales, with rising interest rates and falling used car prices causing some customers to hold off on their purchases. At the same time, the electronics shortage was showing its first signs of easing, and car manufacturers began to increase production again. In addition to the number of car sales dropping, Carvana was faced with another problem – too much costly inventory. After buying cars from customers right at the peak of used car prices, Carvana was stuck with lots of inventory that it couldn't shift, at least not for a profit. While those vehicles were sitting unsold, they were also aging, and by 2022, Carvana also faced more competition, as traditional dealerships modernized and began catching up. Another difficulty Carvana faced compared to local car dealers? It had to transport its cars to customers all over the country. Although it had expanded its dealership network throughout 2020 and 2021, Carvana was still a long way from being easily accessible from every city. Buying cars from customers also required sending drivers to pick them up from various locations and drive them to one of Carvana's inspection centers, while purchased cars needed to be transported to the buyer's local vending machine for delivery. In theory, a car could be bought off a customer by Carvana in one state, transported to another state for inspection, and then delivered to a third state for eventual delivery. Local car dealerships simply don't have these overheads to factor in, giving them a potential edge on pricing over Carvana. In an attempt to streamline its network and reduce its overheads, Carvana announced the purchase of the vehicle auction company Adessa US in February 2022. This gave it ready access to wholesale stock and 56 new sites with which to process its used inventory, 
but left it $2.2 billion in debt just as demand for used cars was slowing down. By the end of the third quarter of 2022, Carvana reported a $2.67 loss per share, bigger than analysts' expectations. The company had already laid off a portion of its workforce earlier in 2022 in an attempt to cut costs, and in November, it announced that a further 1,500 jobs would be cut, representing 8% of its overall workforce. Some reports suggest that Carvana might be bankrupt by the end of 2023 if it doesn't secure a significant infusion of cash, and according to CBT News, the firm's debt pile from its acquisition of Odessa and various other loans means that its annual interest expenses alone are $600 million. There is still a chance, of course, that an outside investor sees potential in the company and provides the cash to keep it afloat while it attempts to return to profitability. There's also the possibility that Ernest Garcia II steps in with further financial assistance. Whatever happens, it seems like Carvana's stock presents a huge gamble for the investors that continue to hold out in the hopes of an eventual turnaround. If Carvana does go under, there are plenty of competitors waiting to take its market share. Vroom and Shift both work on similar business models to Carvana, while Copart, CarMax, and AutoNation are more traditional and control a larger portion of the used car market. That's not to mention the swaths of smaller, local car dealerships that continue to operate up and down the country. Perhaps this is Carvana's biggest problem in the long term. Now that pandemic restrictions are now largely a thing of the past, it has little to distinguish itself from its competitors apart from the car vending machines. So, will that gimmick be enough to save them? Only time will tell.